when you're working with mass transfer equipment, you usually end up having to find this parameter called C star, or sometimes you have to find P star. And it just stands for a equilibrium um, concentration or equilibrium partial pressure in the opposite phase. So we're going to take a look at how you go about finding that and why you need to find it. Most mass transfer equipment is modeled as cross flow. So here's our problem. Um, we have a tube of water going in. It has a certain concentration labeled CIN. And I sp you have to specify that it's the tube, um, certain concentration going out. And then in the shell side, we have just air flowing in the opposite direction. We have a certain partial pressure of this one species, whether that's like hydrogen sulfide or some sort of impurity in the air. In the in-stream, in some concentration of some partial pressure going out in the outstream. And one of the equations for modeling this system, you end up having to find this parameter called delta t log mean. And it's equal to this this whole thing. And you see these this number called delta c star 2 and delta c star 1. I'm just going to show you how you go about solving for delta c star 2. Um, 2 refers to position number 2, which is always over here. Position number 1 is over there. Um, so delta c star 2 would be written as either the partial pressure in the shell minus the concentration in the tube or the tube minus the shell whichever one it is just make sure you're consistent for this I'm just going to do shell minus tube so we'll do PI in shell minus CI out tube the problem with this is that these aren't in the same language you have partial pressure over here and you have concentration over here that just isn't going to work so what we end up having to do is convert this partial pressure into a concentration we call this concentration let's just call it concentration going in in the shell but since it's not actually there it's not actual concentration um, we call it concentration star C star alright so the actual way that we would write this equation down at the bottom is, is like this we would do C I in shell minus concentration going out in the tube. So let's find C star. The way you go about finding C star really depends on the type of equilibrium that exists between your liquid phase and your vapor phase. If you have an ideal liquid vapor equilibrium then you'll end up using these equations. Um, so partial pressure of your species is equal to the molar fraction of that species in the gas phase times the pressure of that gas phase and that's also equal to what it would be in equilibrium to um, so the molar fraction in the liquid phase times the vapor pressure of that species. So that's the ideal case. Non-ideal case, it's a partial pressure, the same as above for this bit, except the proportionality constant is the Henry's Law coefficient. For this problem, um, I'm just going to tell you that the liquid vapor equilibrium for our particular solute is non-ideal. Okay, we're trying to find C star, but in order to find C star, we have to know 
how many moles would be in the water phase, in the liquid phase. And since we have a non-ideal liquid vapor equilibrium from our equation, what we need to find is this number, because this is the molar fraction of our solute in the liquid phase. If that's the case, then since we already know what this is, it's this guy, all we have to do is rearrange the equation. And we can get xi, the molar fraction, is equal to the partial pressure, the species, divided by the Henry's Law coefficient. And that's also equal to um, this. Okay. However, this value is not concentration. It's just a molar fraction. It's, it's a fraction. So in order to make that molar fraction into a concentration, we want to know how many moles are actually in whatever we're trying to find. And what we're trying to find is how much is in the liquid phase. So then what we need to know is how many moles are in the liquid phase. And the answer to that is just to find the concentration of water, since our liquid phase is water. And the, the concentration of water is something like uh, 55.6 moles per liter. Okay. So, working backwards from this guy and this guy, we can find out that the concentration of I in, in the shell phase, star is equal to xi times the concentration of water. Pretty simple. And then in your final equation, you would just plug either this term or this term into xi. Just make sure that all of your units match up, okay? So your concentration units are the same. If they're moles per cubic meter, then they need to be moles per cubic meter. If they're moles per liter, then they need to be moles per liter. And if you want to go backwards, um, you can go backwards too. So let's say um, you knew, let's say both of them were liquid phases, okay? If both of them were liquid phases, then you wouldn't you would end up not using a liquid vapor equilibrium, but a liquid liquid equilibrium. Let me show you what that will look like. In liquid liquid equilibriums that are non-ideal, we use this term called the partition coefficient, and it's written as k, and then there's always one of the phases, liquid phases, over the other liquid phase. And that's equal to the concentration of that species in, let's call this oil, for O, and over the concentration of water, for H. And that's, that's what I drew over here. So let's say we have oil on top of water, and our system is the water, okay? And we wanted to model the boundary condition right there at this phase, okay? Well, we know that, um, let's just say that the concentration, hold on, let me step back a second. Okay, so let's say the partition coefficient is equal to 57. And we know that the concentration of this species I is going to remain constant in the oil phase. So we know that this boundary condition is going to remain constant as well. But we can't write 
a concentration for the species I as a boundary condition for water if we only know its concentration in oil. So what we're looking for is this. What is this value at this position? Okay. All we have to do then is just rearrange and we'll get the concentration species I in the water phase that's at equilibrium with what's in the oil phase is equal to um, it's equal to C I of the oil divided by the partition coefficient which in this case happens to be 57 So if we translate this back to our previous problem and say rather than the shell being full of air, it was, let's say, full of oil, okay? In that case, if it was full of oil, then this wouldn't be a partial pressure. It would be a concentration in the oil, in the shell, concentration in the oil going out in the shell this would be concentration going in the shell but remember this is the concentration in oil okay the oil concentration we have to have these two be the same language okay in order for that to work for that to happen we have to translate this into a C star what would it be like? What concentration would it be in equilibrium with the solvent in the liquid phase? Okay. So to do that, we would just go back to our partition coefficient. K O W equals concentration um, of I in the oil over concentration of I in the water and in this case what we know is this okay so these two are the same what we're trying to get is a C star the C star is this guy okay so our C star should go there then it's just a matter of rearranging and we get C star by in the water is equal to what was it? Um, yeah, concentration by in the oil divided by the partition coefficient. Okay, hope this helped. Just remember when in confusion, always go back to what type of equilibrium am I dealing with? Is it ideal? Is it non-ideal? And what equations do I need in order to relate a concentra concentration in one phase to the concentration in another phase? All right, hope this helped. And if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.